good day and welcome to the Bharat Electronics Q1 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by Ilala Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you Zico. Good morning everyone. On behalf of Ilara Securities, we welcome you all to the Q1 FY24 conference call of Bharat Electronics Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of Bharat Electronics represented by Shri Banu Prakash Shivastav, Chairman and Managing Director, Shri Damodar Bhattar, Director Finance and CFO, uh, Mr. Srinivas, Company Secretary along with the team members. We will begin the call with a brief overview by the management followed by Q&A session. I'll now hand the call to Srinivas sir for his opening remarks. Over to you sir. Thank you Mr. Harish. I would request our CMD sir to kindly make the opening remarks. Good morning to all of you. Uh, Bharat Electronics uh, uh, Board of Directors has approved the Q1 uh, results yesterday evening. Uh, we have in, uh, turnover has been increased to 3447 crores, which is 12.51% uh, uh, higher than previous quarter's uh, figure of 5064. Uh, there has been significant increase in PBT, PAC, EBITDA and earning per shares and other financial uh, performance. Our order book position uh, is 65,356 crores. Uh, prospects are looking good, results are available uh, on our site, so uh, we welcome the uh, questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good morning everyone and uh, congratulations for a great set of numbers sir. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The first one is essentially on uh, the order inflow that we can expect during the year. Now the year is starting with a bank for you with the order inflow of roughly 8090 crores. Uh, in Q1 FI24. Going ahead, uh, I believe there are uh, orders for, you know, for Indian Army 4500 crores uh, apart from uh, some other uh, platform. So if you can just highlight, uh, you know, whether the number that you invited last time, 20,000 crores, that still remains or uh, there is a, uh, a chance that it will be exceeded? No, we, we hold by uh, order inflow in this financial year around uh, 20,000 crores. And any significant change, if it happens in future, we'll let you know. But as of now, uh, we are confident that we'll be able to receive uh, 20,000 crores plus that. Okay, so any uh, ideas are when uh, we will be getting this long-term few order in this one from Indian Army uh, and uh, some, uh, if you can just uh, let us know uh, that uh, for uh, apart from this few orders, you know, other party radar and all when these orders will uh, come. See, this, this is a uh, few uh, PNC is concluded and then uh, the process uh, in uh, under MOD. So it has to, it takes its own time. So uh, uh, we'll come to know uh, when order is approved and we sign the contract. So six months from now or I mean it would be like uh, 
जी ये मोस्ट प्रोसेस इज सच दैट इंटरनल इंटरनल फाइल मूवमेंट वी कैन नॉट ट्रैक एंड वी कैन नॉट टेल एट प्रेजेंट वी कैन टेल मैक्सिमम इट विल बी 6 मंथ्स एंड वी व्हाट वी एंटिसिपेट इज मैक्सिमम इज 6 मंथ्स विद इन व्हिच इट शुड कम दैट इज द मैक्सिमम पीरियड वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग इट ओके ओके सर आई हैव अदर क्वेश्चन दैट कम बैक थैंक यू अलोन thank you our next question is from the line of harshit patel from equity securities please go ahead with your question uh, thank you very much for the opportunity sir sir uh, my first question is uh, on our content uh, that we provide in light utility helicopter and light combat helicopter because i think these two platforms are going to be produced in bulk and therefore will be a re- recurring revenue stream for us so what are the systems that we provide to hl for these platforms and what would be its share in the overall value of a helicopter see we are still uh, in discussion with uh, hl so at this point of time it is premature to give you figures but once we uh, move ahead we'll let you know uh sure sir uh, but uh, then in uh, alh group i think we would be supplying uh, quite a lot of avionics products so if you can elaborate so we can take a cue from that as to what uh, we will be providing so I, 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 i told you at this point i think see all discussions happen unless we move ahead and when uh, travel some distance it, it's premature at this stage uh, no problem sir so my uh, second question is uh, just uh, 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 from the uh, uh, question of the earlier participant if you can highlight uh, four five large orders uh, uh, those are in the pipeline where the cnc process is going on where the eon process is going on and these orders would be realized probably next one year time so if you can give that pipeline it will be very nice yes uh, as uh, i told one is that fuses uh, uh then uh, orders in pipeline are uh, uh, that is uh, your electronic uh, warfare for ship based system uh, around 1000 crore plus roughly 1000 crore 500 then around 6000 crore plus are bare nominated equipment which uh, we will get from uh, various uh, ngo otv and uh, other vessels where the demodi has placed the order at march end to grsc gsl then larsen and tubro then fleet support uh, which is also likely uh, the hsl is also likely to get so around 6000 crores are uh, will come from that so uh, 8100 plus we have already got so major if you see 6000 1500 and then 4500 in print so it reaches near 20000 then small small order spare order small equipment something it keeps on coming understood sir uh, thank you very much uh, for answering my questions and all the best thank you our next question is from the line of sumit kishore from access capital please go ahead thanks so the opportunity and the question thank you what uh, uh, sorry to interrupt mr kishore may we request you to use your handset as you are not audible thank you uh, yeah am i audible now yes sir this is a little better I have two questions. So one is, if you could give us uh, uh, some sort of update on the. I think there, there is some problem with background noise. Sure. Are we are not very much. Uh, uh, can you give us a sense on what are the what is the status on big ticket prospects like QR Sam and MR Sam, which you mentioned could get awarded over a FI 25 time frame? What is the progress uh, around these two large contracts? See, QR Sam. Uh, trial reports and all has been submitted by uh, to armed forces and uh, we have given some rough order of magnitude pricing also uh, what will be the likely pricing based on the likely configuration which on which they are working so post that uh, now they will be working on uh, that aon pricing and aon proposal statement of case and all so that will go through okay so is it reasonable to expect that this can come over a fi 25 time frame Yes, it is reasonable as of now, and this will be like a fifteen thousand crore kind of a contract in terms of ticket size. It's it's uh, difficult to say uh, exact sure. value, but yes, uh, uh, it depends upon how many regiments uh, army takes. But yes, okay. it's uh, let let us see. But what you say that in public domain, and uh, I can say reasonable because yes. these are the figures. It exactly depends upon what configuration, what item, what. 
they want to take so it keeps on changing yeah and But is there anything separate on i just know yeah yeah and anything separately on mrsm or Uh, MRM also some discussions are there, but uh, it's a initial discussion stage only. Okay, so QR sign is is much ahead of MRM in terms of progress. It looks, it looks like. Okay, and then second question is on the receivable position and cash and cash equivalents as of June 2023. If you could give us an update, a receivable position is around seven thousand crores. It remains around the same level as of close of March. Yes. And cash position is also reasonably good, as you know. Happily, we do not disclose the balance sheet assets, but uh, cash position is also reasonably good. There are uh, good inflows. There are no budgetary constraints, so we are uh, maintaining the same receivables and uh, cash position is also good. Okay. Uh, finally, sir, last year you had mentioned that there was some spillover of revenue from fourth quarter of FY22 to first quarter of FY23 because of some, some semiconductor shortage related issues. Which had uh, impeded revenue booking in fourth quarter of FY22. Despite that, we see that there has been a 13% top line growth on the Q1 base of last year. So that's very strong execution, I would uh, uh, think. You know, so you uh, you would say you are well on track to achieve your 17% growth guidance for the year. Yes, yes, yes. We are well on track. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Sumit Kishore. May we request you to rejoin the question queue for follow-up questions? And there are several participants waiting for their turn. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Charinjit Singh from DSP. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on good set of numbers. So, sir, my first question is regarding the uh, non-defence sector or the you know civilian sector. So, what are the kind of you know uh, opportunities we are seeing there? And we had done a lot of work in terms of you know airport security control and metro-related work. Uh, you know, when can we see the ordering starting from that particular segment? That's my first question. <clears throat> Last time also, uh, uh, I told that uh, this takes time. So metro six segments like IATS, we have already uh, delivered one system. It is in operation. So now, when future metros and not wherever they are going to upgrade, there is a opportunity. Similarly, uh, on other products of metro where we are working, like developing CBTC and uh, Super Kada. Simulators and all it will come in phase manner, and related business opportunities are also coming. But in my opinion, significant business it may take one to two years uh, minimum, where it will be impactful. Uh, uh, what you say that uh, revenue opportunity will be there in this segment. Similarly, in uh, civil aviation also, uh, we are working with AI, so there also uh, the development and trial stage. So there also. After maybe one or two years, you will see significant. In all these uh, things, uh, it is still the initial stages. Eh? So definitely, it is. Uh, it may take at least a couple of years to get some materialization on this. But we are right on track. Sir. We are right on track. Okay. And sir, uh, in terms of the exports, uh, are we seeing any uh, further, you know, incremental opportunities coming up? Uh, For us, and we understand that uh, there have been, you know, targets given for the defence PSUs to scale up exports in next two years significantly. If you can touch upon that part and how is this pipeline building up? So you are absolutely right. Government is very aggressive on exports, and we are working closely with uh, MOD uh, to increase our export, and that's why a lot of interests and discussions are going on with our friendly countries and target markets. Uh, our we are in touch with our defence agencies. Our foreign officers are also working. We are giving uh, them details. We are meeting them. So uh, process is on, and that's why if you see this year we are we are targeting much better export value than what we targeted last year. Around 19 million, 19 million dollars. Last year we did around 46.8 million dollars. So this year 90 million dollars, and then significant increase keep on uh, we will keep on achieving. Okay, but what sort of opportunities, sir, we are seeing? If you can, you know, give any further details in terms in, of in, the, in these defence contracts, uh, opportunities, uh, you know, our product range, so it will be in the same range also. But uh, once it is finalised, because there are uh, glo- other global players also who are targeting the same same market, so it, it, it is not uh, uh, proper for me to divulge that. Uh, okay. uh, product details are on uh, uh, areas where we are working. 
once they get the order we'll share with you okay and sir uh, just lastly in the past you had also shared about you know our area of uh, you know focus uh, in terms of saas and we trying to scale up uh, in that segment so any further you know update yes software yes sir software service so any update on that software service we are scaling up uh, and you are aware we have opened a software center in visakhapatnam also but our as of now our major software contribution is towards uh, our own offering to defense forces so so that we can add value which can improve our uh, profitability outside also we are leveraging but outside uh, other area uh, uh, unless we we are very strong on our own core competency and what services Uh, other area will will wait for some time internal development is also helping us a lot because our internal software group does the thing for the for equipments group eh? that helps us a lot in, uh, in maintaining our margin also right sir so thanks a lot for taking my questions all the best for the future thank you thank you thank you our next question is from the line of sir jit yadav from mount etra finance please go ahead with the question Good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations for the for the good numbers. I want to know about the execution which you're looking at for during the financial year. We had an order book of sixty thousand six ninety crores as on thirty first March, and about twenty thousand crore orders are expected during the. How much of these orders will be able to execute? This is first question. And second question is, uh, we signed uh, a large number of MOUs during last one year. Any of these MOUs you see converting into orders or any opportunities? Uh, we are right on track uh, as we given the guidance of around 17% uh, uh, revenue growth, which translates to uh, sales turnover of around 20,000 crore plus in this financial year. So we are on track because that is based on what order book we had in uh, on first of April. Uh, as of now, you are aware, sixty-five thousand three fifty-six. As of thirtieth uh, June, we had ordered. So execution right on track based on the requirement of the our customers. Because it's not like all orders can be executed at the same time. It depends upon the terms and conditions of the contract. Uh, when it is required by customer, what are the conditions? Uh, many new contracts they they involve uh, first approving uh, first the production model and then. Uh, then after only bulk supply. So taking care or taking into consideration all these uh, uh, requirements of the contract, what we get, seventeen uh, percent growth. That's what we projected, uh, amounting to twenty uh, thousand crore plus revenue this year, and we are right on track uh, as far as uh, execution is concerned. What was your second question? My second question was that uh, we signed a number of MOUs last yes. year. So uh, MOU is fine, but uh, it, but it takes time to convert MOU into uh, uh, revenue generation. So we are working these these most of the MOUs are in the base of core development, uh, working on different solutions. So uh, it's a time taking process. We are working on that. Uh, impact of that uh, will be really visible in next couple of years. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Dipen Wakil from Incred Equities. Please go ahead. Thank you so much for the opportunity and um, congratulations on a great setup number. So my first question is on the non-defense uh, segment of our uh, revenue. So uh, how much is the contribution from the non-defense and specifically from the EV, EVM and repair machines that are expected this year? And uh, what kind of margin do we have in the non-defense uh, segment? See, uh, non-defense sector uh, EVMs will be around eight to nine hundred crores this year. I think uh, for the current quarter, per se, the EVM, VPAT, and defense non-defense was in the ratio of seventy-five twenty-five for the current quarter because we have sold more EVM, VPAT for the forthcoming elections. But for the year as a whole, the the ratio would be around. Uh, 80 85% in defense and around 15 to 20% in non defense it around the range 15 to 20% 15% could be because of the eu we bet 15% will be in non defense 15 and 85 in defense 
Okay, so from our EVM and we... Sorry to interrupt. I've been concerned, as you know, we don't disclose the segment by margin. So the pen may be request you to use your hand. Thank you. Um, so am I audible now? Yes, sir. You yeah. sounded very muffled, sir. Thank you. So, and the second thing is on the we ended FY23 on a strong uh, test uh, balance. So, any CAPEX or any uh, uh, CAPEX guidance for this year? CAPEX guidance remains at around 700 to 800 crores for the current year. So, that is mainly maintenance CAPEX or any growth CAPEX? No, growth CAPEX is also there in that. Maintenance, of course, will be there. Some of the maintenance will also be there. And there are some growth CAPEX. There are large infrastructures coming up. So, it is a long-term growth, not that it will give growth in one or two years because there are some buildings which are coming up, infrastructure development, all this will take some time to fructify. But obviously, it's a mix of both, maintenance also and uh, augmentation as well as the fresh additions, both are there. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir, for answering my questions and all the best for FY24. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jonas Putta from Birla Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, a couple of questions. Firstly, uh, can you talk about uh, the employee cost? Uh, is there an uh, element of actuarial uh, revaluation? Mr. Mr. Jonas, uh, your line is not clear, sir. Could you please use your answer? Is this better? Uh, so, could you say something, please? Yeah, uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, yeah, please, sir. Yeah, so on the employee cost, uh, you know, on a, even on a Q on Q basis, there's some uh, jump in the employee cost. So, you know, if you can explain that. The second question was on, we made some uh, large provisions uh, in the last two quarters of SI23. Uh, is there an element of right back that is expected in the current year and or do we expect further more provisions pertaining to that one or two projects that sort of left that and the last question was on uh, other income you know uh, again that that seen a spike so does this also quarter include uh, a dividend from subsidiary if you can quantify that yeah, anyway, on the first question, the employee benefit expense increased from 576 crores to 623 crores. It's a normal increase of dearness allowance and some contract labor, some extra contract labors have been put. So those sort of things, nothing much on actual impact is there on this. So it's a just normal increase of around 8% in salaries. It's a normal increment, dearness allowance and other contract people joining. So it is on those things. As far as salary is concerned, not much actual impact is there in the first quarter. And as far as uh, your second question was on, on provisions. Provisions right back. Eh? On the provisions made during the last two quarters of 22-23, there is not much right back as of now. We are taking up the cases, but the success will depend on in only the time to come. We will be knowing how much success we are able to achieve in that uh, manner. But we are as of now, there is no right back out of that. As the further the possible of uh, right of further creation of provisions is required sir, for those projects that led to that provision. Yes, 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 definitely because as I was telling earlier also, once the things enter into a LD zone, eh, then obviously it continues to be in the LD zone and we will be incurring LDs on those projects which have uh, already entered into LD zone even if the execution is in the current financial year. Attempts are being made wherever possible that where we feel that we will be able to get it but that takes, takes some time. As of now, definitely there will be further provisions on that account, there is no doubt on that. And as far as other income is concerned, it's mainly, there is no interest in the income from the, uh, subsidy this time, dividend income, except for some 2 crores last year or 78 crores. And they, it is mainly because of interest income has increased. Interest income last time, this time it was 78 crores, now it is 132 crores. So because of the interest income increase, other income has increased. Got it. Thank you, sir. And all the best. Right. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Um, first is on uh, the expansion that we are, uh, you know, doing on six or seven locations. 
एक्सट्रा सारे पुणे मैंगलोर नागपुर एक्सेट्रा यू नो इफ यू सी दी कैपेसिटी एक्सपेंशन एंड ऑल्सो वी आर यू नो मे बी एडिंग लॉर्ड ऑफ टेस्ट यू नो लाइन सू which has been a restrict you know restraint for us uh, in revenue building etc um do you think um fy25 uh, you know next 2 3 years the revenue run rate um can increase because of this because i think this year you're going to execute the lr sam completely uh, and uh, and voting machines etc so does that uh, call for you know much better revenue building in the next 2 3 years that's my first question uh see uh as you are aware new electro optics company is coming a building is coming in uh, nimaluru uh, ew systems for a uh, land based uh, uh, that uh, ew equipment which is coming in ibrahim patnam nagpur for fuse uh, complex so uh, major expansion in hyderabad unit for uh, micro web component so yes definitely this will this will help in uh, execution of the project as of now what we see is uh, revenue growth in the region of around 15-17% in next uh, two years uh, depending upon what is because what is the order in pipeline because all these orders are not uh, executable in one year even as per contract so even if whether it is qr sam or any other big ticket programs also come their execution time is normally 3 3 to 4 years uh, lr sam will be tapering off then uh, qr sam will come Yeah, Akash will uh, take off. That's what uh, we got from uh, BDL. So revenue growth will be in the same 15, 20, somewhere 17, 18. That's what we we, we uh, it will be in that range. Fair, fair. And second, the last question is on the prospect pipeline and the impact on uh, order book. Um, the last two three years, uh, you know, the revenue building vis-a-vis the orders that they are getting. Do you think in next two years? it is possible for us to uh, you know reach an order closing order book position of 780 800 billion uh, and you can you can tell us on the conservative estimate of qrs i know it's too early we must sure to understand how what value will come for qrs in uh, next year but um, you know fair conservative assessment do you think in march 26 you can be 800 billion order book that's my sound question sir thank you That today we are in six uh, fifty billion, sixty five thousand crores, eh? and we, as you have told, we are planning for a growth of around fifteen per seventeen percent this year, and maybe around same fifteen percent in the coming years. And much will depend on the seven hundred billion or eight hundred billion. Much will depend on any last ticket orders coming. In the normal course of orders coming, the order range is likely to be in this range only. If any last ticket order comes, then definitely that could make a slight jump in the order position. उटर went up to about 60 or 1023 this year also assuming we do 20000 crores of orders some other revenues we probably be flat right in terms of uh, uh, the order book on a yoy basis around that 60000 crore number uh, plus uh, you know even the orders we get this year for example the fuses is more like a 10 year order uh, the akash is more like a 4 5 year order so uh, you know i'm just struggling to understand you know how do we really i mean with our order books kind of flattening out Uh, uh you know top top line obviously between 20 to 23 uh, you know fi by when he went up from 12 to now we are at 20000 crore top line so you know with no growth in order book uh, i mean i'm just struggling how do we kind of get that confidence of 15% growth no gro- gro- growth will be there uh, see uh, this year we are projecting an order inflow of around 20000 crore <clears throat> definitely next year it will be more because uh, many platforms are coming uh, p75i uh, that p76 programs are coming where we have uh, uh, indigenous content where we are by na minute equipment we are having uh, so and with country jat nirbhar program any any big platform or uh, government is working on that there will be electronic equipment and we have got a, a very good opportunity to chip in that so it will continue uh, government defense spending will uh, increase our our order book definitely it will not be flattening at 20000 crore per 
year. Uh, what projecting we are projecting 20,000 crores plus this year. Definitely with QR SAM coming and uh, maintenance order coming, it will be much more in the next financial year than what we are projecting in this financial year. With the QR SAM, what uh, what value is there in uh, mm. uh, in the market or what you say then in public mm. domain? Definitely uh, with QR SAM uh, rectifying. Our order inflow is much, much more than uh, what you see in this financial year. No, no, fair. Uh, you know, okay, but, but you know, because let's let's assume even if you get that 15,000 crore order for a QR fam, uh, maybe your order inflows go to about 30,000 odd uh, for 25. Uh, uh, you know, but but, but anyway, I'll, I'll take this offline. You know, because your base, the revenue base itself, has become so big, right? At 20,000 crores plus. Uh, you know, you need a couple of these larger orders to come through, uh, and, and and I guess you know even execution for these would be spread over five seven years, right? Uh, so, yeah. but anyway, yeah, okay. yeah, we are talking yeah. of the order book. Though we are talking of mm. this QR spam and other bigger orders, there are also mm. very large chunk of smaller orders mm. which keep coming, sure. which have a shorter execution time. Mm. So, what you are telling QR time, it will get executed in 3-4 mm. years and so your revenue, definitely it will be, revenue will be spread for QR time and other large orders in 3-4 years. Mm. But there are many other small orders which also constitute more than 50% of the orders in flow, which are having only a cycle time of only 1 or 2 years of delivery. So, it's a mix of both. That is point one. Point number two regarding your uh, our, our order book growth. Mm. I think we, can, we hope to continue to maintain a two and a half to three years of order, I mean revenue, uh, revenues in the order book. Two and a yeah. half to three years even in the coming years. Mm. Around two and a half to three years will be in the pipeline as far as the order book is concerned. This is what we expect to maintain at the end of March 24, 25. It continues to be like that. Okay. Because it's a mix of orders. Both. We, are, mm. we are only talking of QSM. But there is, we again and again tell for any ship building, we have we have got our share of orders. We need HL get HL submarines, we get orders. HL aircraft, we get orders. So it's, with all this, it's a combination. And of course, there are spares, services, maintenance. All with the combination of all this, it's a mix. Though two large orders we talk, many small orders also make the same numbers. Fair. Okay. Sir. Okay. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Renu Bed from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, good morning and thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, my first question is, uh, can you update on what was the mix of exports during the current quarter? Current quarter, the exports was around 87 crores in numbers. Of course, it's about uh, 10 million dollars we can take. Sure. Um, secondly, 87 crores. Sure. Um, secondly, um, can you also share some update on the large projects which we are executing, LRSAM, uh, completion of IACCS project and Akash missiles, where are we in terms of the execution timeline, as in um, execution in terms of percentage of the order uh, which has been completed and uh, update on the level of indigenization which we have broadly achieved or uh, which we are targeting to achieve this year for LRSAM because we are expecting a higher share of localization to come through from fiscal 24 for this project. Uh, we are right on track. Uh, uh, if you see, uh, as per customer project building program, and uh, if you see uh, plan for 2023, roughly around 3,004 order execution will come from uh, 23-24 this financial year. Uh, localization or indigenization continues. Uh, uh, overall, will be around, uh, around uh, like, but it all there are various subsystems of uh, LRM. So uh, some some uh, some portion uh, there will be a, a higher level of indigenization. Some there will be less. But in the range what we committed in the contract, uh, we are meeting. On IACCS and uh, Akash? IACCS also we are right on the track uh, because most of the delivery portion it has been completed. Now it's uh, going through that installation, commissioning, uh, 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 overground nodes which are already operational, uh, AMC is coming. Uh, so uh, 
this is uh, uh, what you can say that major uh, supplies and deliveries have been completed. Uh, Out of 8,000 crores uh, of the contract value in IACCS, the pending order as on date is only 2,000 crores, which will be exhibited over a period of time. Okay, and Akash? Akash Missile Systems, the pending order is very less. We got a order of 5,300 crores. It's almost come. It will be getting updated in the current year. Got it. Uh, sure. And lastly, um, can you share some updates on uh, the development of the project which you are working with DRDO for drones? Uh, by when do we expect uh, the project to be broadly uh, there and developmental or commercial orders uh, coming to us? Any timelines or progress? Uh, the drone project for which we are working with DRDO? Okay. Yes. Uh, see. Uh, this is under uh, trial and uh, uh, it is not fair from my side to comment at this because the trial is led by DRDU and we are a uh, developmental partner along with the uh, HL. So it's better that uh, their specific details are shared by DRDU. Sure, but if we look from a two to four year perspective, what could be the size of uh, these orders that could come commercially to us uh, uh, in that space? Uh, overall, this, this, for combined yeah, at this point, at this point of time, it is premature to tell because company uh, government is already uh, working with the uh, USA for the MQ nine B program, uh, which is uh, high altitude, long range uh, that platform. Then these will be medium altitude and uh, long range uh, that equipment. So uh, let us see what mix uh, different services they want for uh, uh, this product. So uh, value and all will be known only when uh, we know the uh, uh, strategic plan or that that of services. Done. But largely we are into the male category and not the hail category so far. As of now, yes. As of. Thanks much and all the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aditya Mumbia from Court of Securities. Please go ahead. Um, um, hello everyone and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first question was on uh, gross margins which for this quarter uh, have been higher uh, than the 40 to 42 percent range that you've guided for the full year. I wanted to check whether uh, 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 the stance on the full year guidance has uh, in any manner changed and if not so is it more linked to this quarter having uh, a higher uh, uh, EV and EV pad kind of contribution that gross margins are higher. We would not like to comment on whether it's an EVM VPAT or what, but overall the guidance remains same that 40 to 42 percent gross margin for the current year and a bit of 21 to 23 percent. It's only the composition of various orders which have been executed in the first quarter which has given a higher margin. And going ahead during the year, we expect to maintain the guidance which has been given earlier. Understood. Um, and the second question that I had was more uh, on, uh, on the aspect of indigenization. Now from your last concord, I understand that uh, uh, it may more be a volume impact rather than a margin impact. Uh, wanted to check with you how to kind of think through uh, the growth impact and volumes that can happen for you over time. For instance, when you're planning your next two, three years of key picks, how much proportion of that may be going towards uh, products uh, that will get engineered over time? Just some sense from, from the growth perspective would be useful over here. Thank you. I do think you are uh, com talking of capex. Capex, as we told, we are going to keep it around. It will be around 700 to 800 crores. Indigenization is linked to more the R&D expenditure. What you are talking of, like capex is linked to more infrastructure building. Whereas we are told for capex for indigenization. So there's a capex of uh, 800 crores, 700 to 800, which you are expecting to enter in the current year. And R&D expenditure will continue to be around to six six percent to six to seven percent in the current year of the revenues. So R&D expenditure will lead to the indigenization, which will continue to give us the benefits uh, in the coming years. So could this be a meaningful uh, uh, growth boost on an annual basis for you next three, four years? Uh, if you could give us some more so growth color. On, growth on in terms of revenues you are talking? Absolutely, sir. Revenues, revenues, we have already told, we are giving a guidance of 17%. We have an order book of 65,000 crores. And in the coming years also, we expect to maintain this order intake position and it may further improve with last ticket order. And uh, with the indigenization, we hope to continue to maintain the margins of what we have guided for earlier. 
Sure. So just a last question from my side. Uh, the other income boost you kind of clarified for the quarter. So would it be fair to kind of annualize the one Q number uh, uh, for now? Other income for the current full year. Yeah, yeah. Now full year, I am not able to tell you at this point what will be the full year number. Our current quarter year we have to have we had some interest income increase. So over, over the time, I mean, we will not be able to tell you exactly what will be the figure for the full year as a well. whole. Um, got that. Those are my questions. So thanks a lot for your response. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aman Vij from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir. My question is on the uh, youth complex, uh, the Nagpur youth complex, uh, which we are setting up. If you can talk about the timelines and the capacities, uh, what will be the capacity per year uh, after this expansion? What is it currently? Uh, See, uh, yeah, youth complex uh, already first phase we have done that is uh, building the boundary and leveling and all these things. Uh, now we are going for uh, building. Construction, so tender and all are going. So another two years it should come. So it will address uh, long-term fuse contract requirement and any, any additional uh, fuse business which will be there apart from this long term. I'm sorry. What will be the capacity like? Uh, will it be like two lakh, five lakh fuses per year after this capacity? Uh, we cannot specify that exact capacity because capacity depends upon whether you can work in two shift, or three shift, or one shift depending upon. Uh, how much those those, are, those are one thing. It also require. It depends on the requirement of the customer in that year. So if they require that much number, so we have to work on only that many numbers only. It is it is that way also. It's not that we can produce maximum in one year and try to deliver. It's the delivery period is also stated. So we'll have to go in accordance with the delivery schedule also. No, no, sir. That is understood. But uh, we have talked about we are increasing uh, from say 100 crore a year to 500 crore a year. So will that uh, capacity be enough uh, in one shift, two shift, or three shift uh, that new Nagpur? Uh, what 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 we have envisaged is that uh, the way we are building complex, there will be other products also which can be built, which are uh, by product are related with a similar type of uh, item like fuse. So uh, and then uh, uh, construction hangar and all will be built based on current requirements, which can be scaled up further uh, if uh, requirement increases. So, but sir, for next two years, how will we supply the extra requirements which we now have compared to what we used to supply? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 have, we have enough capacity uh, to meet current requirement uh, of the customer in our Pune unit. There also we have added uh, lines for fuse and we will be able to meet current requirement. Uh, once this comes up, uh, we, we will shift that operations to Nagpur because Pune unit we are making some uh, many other products also. Uh, so our objective is to, uh, once it comes up, uh, start manufacturing here and utilize that space and this for uh, other products in our money unit. What is the amount we are spending on this Nagpur facility, sir? Uh, Nagpur around, uh, Nagpur around it, so overall it's around 200 plus crores. Over the two years combined? Okay, and sir, you also talked about uh, that uh, PNC was the land and land and uh, compound wall is already spent. Eh? So another maybe hundred crores could come up in the summer, coming from so this year and next year. Okay, sure, sir. Uh, you, last time you talked about Sorry, the PNC. Mr. Aman, maybe request you to rejoin the question queue. Follow up question. I, I, I had only one question. Uh, just let me complete the second question, and then I'll uh, come back in the queue if that's okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. So my uh, second and final question is: uh, Last time you talked about that uh, PNC uh, was almost over, and we had one small issue which needs to be resolved, and it will be resolved in the one the next one month related to fuse. So uh, is that issue? related to related to fuse fuse only uh, the trial? Yeah. Talking about fuse order wrong. Okay. Yeah. Fuse order. There is no issue now. Uh, this, uh, Order is in pipeline, it is under process in MOD, it should come. There is no issue. As of now, there is no issue. Sorry, when should it come, sir? Uh, 
Hi sir, thanks for taking my question. Uh, my question uh, pertains to export. I think you highlighted that this year we are targeting 90 million dollar export. So I think that roughly comes about three to four percent of the guidance which we are giving for the full year. Uh, just wanted to understand. Uh, earlier we used to talk about you know raising exports to some uh, 10 percent odd. So what are what are our targets uh, for upcoming years on export and? Uh, Uh, what exactly we are exporting? Uh, which geographies we are exporting? If you could uh, highlight that, and uh, are we targeting any non-defence export also? Uh, yeah, that is my first question. You see, uh, currently uh, we have an order uh, for TR modules from LS Jones, some electro-optic equipment from Israel. We are also giving uh, uh, to Airbus Japan. Something to alert and also, so these are equipments which are part of yes, where we have we are manufacturing them, uh, some of the items and supplying them. Apart from that, so we we are also uh, we have supplied to Maldives also. Some, uh, we have a T uh, AMT from Maldives. We are also working with the, uh, some companies in USA for manufacturing their products in India. Uh, friendly countries we are working. We are offering like Vietnam also, uh, and uh, our teams are visiting. They have visited in Nigeria, Brazil. So uh, we are exploring. Uh, government is actively encouraging. So uh, we will be able to scale up, but uh, export business in different sectors side. We are on track, uh, but uh, more visibility comes with passage of time. So, any target uh, in next three, four years? Reaching, reaching, then reaching ten percent will take quite some time. It is not so when uh, that we'll be able to reach immediately. It's only a, what to say, long way. I, I can tell. As far as export is concerned, overall, overall revenue growth we are I mean, maintaining at seventeen percent. But export has becoming ten percent of the revenues. It will take some more time. It will take quite some time. Right. And and for uh, for one JV which used to uh, we used to talk about with Triton for uh, for a uh, uh, battery for I think MHCV or some I think for buses. So I think uh, uh, that was about eight thousand crore uh, or the or the any update on that? There was no JV. Uh, we signed an MOU and then we are we supposed right. to give one set of battery. We have already supplied to Triton. Triton is evaluating that. Uh, let them come back, and then based on their business opportunity, we will see that uh, what can be done. Because we have to see what is the business opportunity. As we had indicated earlier, we are not factored much of that uh, order book from that whatever comes out. We are not factored in any of our this one because uh, we do not see it is under evaluation, and they need to come back and with exact more quantity and values what they want. So presently we are not factored that particular order in our order book. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Amit Tanwani. We will request you to rejoin the question queue for follow-up questions. Ladies and gentlemen, in the interest of time and fairness to all participants, may we request you to limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Vijay Goel from. ICICI Securities, please go ahead with your question, sir. Yeah, sir, I have a couple of questions. The first is on Uttam AESA radars. So, can you highlight me what's the status of uh, these radars? Because uh, we understand that you know these radars will be installed on Tejas NK1A or uh, upgraded Sukhoi's. And since you know Tejas NK1 deliveries will start from this year, and uh, so just wanted to understand you know by when uh, I mean, we are expecting. Orders for the data, and what could be the size of uh, this order? Uttam, I think there are two players in that. Uh, one private player, and we are there. So we 
are working on uh, at this time uh, i would not like to uh, uh, well on much details once we move ahead in some visibility is there we'll let you know sure and sir uh, regarding this order book of 65356 crores out of this how much is this uh, for non defense Just one minute just give non defense constitutes around 6% as of now okay and what's the average execution period of this uh, non defense part non defense normally we are able to execute in one or two years non defense other they don't uh, Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Praveen from Ratnavali. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. I have two questions. First of all, I would like you to help us understand the DWR and WRAP opportunity. As not clear. Mind. Your voice is not clear. Sir, so, am I audible right now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. So, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm asking about the uh, AEW and AWX opportunity, as there is a significant gap between uh, India and, and its adversaries. The government has been planning uh, for upgrading the uh, AEW and AWX program, but then uh, around five thousand, six thousand crores of uh, program, which is uh, still pending for I think five six platform of based on a three three zero aircraft. so i just want to understand the, what is the status and if i consider per aircraft 1000 crores orders then what is our contribution see our our team this is in preliminary uh, discussions uh, and there are other players also involved so our team also is working on that so since other players are also involved i would not like to uh, give comments on this okay so uh, my next question is if you can break it up your uh, uh, current order book of around 65000 crores into defense and in defense how much is the ew and uh, what is the portion of the space from defense from defense from defense is there 90% ew If, if if you see around uh, 6% is non defense and if uh, ew segments is around uh, 15000 crores and what about space sir space we have not specified separately so is the uh, scenario of space the uh, orders is well in that like uh, are they coming because we have been uh, uh, hearing like there is some uh, there is some upgradation is, is the changes is happening from isro point of view and that is why the order in place is not coming see, so see, isro isro our order order from isro is not very significant as of now that which have any any uh, impact on the high value okay sir thank you thank you Our next question is from the line of Amit Binde from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Please yeah, yeah. Please tell. Please tell. So, uh, yeah, sir. I wanted to understand what is the split of uh, products and services in our order book one, and uh, within that, if you can also tell us how are we based on nomination-based contract? Uh, I mean, the share of nomination-based contract in the order book. Order book as on today the nomination base is around ninety five percent. Okay, and going forward as well, this new orders that we are expecting, most of them uh, would be in the same uh, same category. Most of them are nomination bases, but some orders we are winning on competitive tenders also, but value okay. is not that. Right, and how about the split of uh, product and services? Product and services is around ninety ten. Ninety ten. Thanks. That was easy. Visual notices. Thank you. Going forward, we would request participants that we are restricting to one question per participant. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again. I have uh, my question is actually around you know Tejas program. So uh, Tejas Mark One A, Amka Mark Two, etc. Now this goes beyond your uh, range that you have mentioned. You know, so just wanted to understand what kind of you know uh, uh, value of production uh, we can expect uh, from uh, these programs. I will share. Uh, just a ballpark number would do, sir. At this stage. Tejas we supply avionics package mark A1, but exact value at this point of time I do not have with me. No, sir. I was asking you know, on the potential, you know, mark one A, uh, mark two, uh, AMCA, where you know the requirement would. I just mean, sorry, I just now I don't have that exact value because there are thousands of products where quotations are submitted. So offhand I don't have. I can share it later. Okay, so that helps. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Amit Mahawar from UBS. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, sir. Thank you again. Just two quick questions. Uh, in the in the fuse uh, manufacturing facility, will we do the course correction uh, fuses? Um, also, which one? Uh, I'm saying the fuse manufacturing facility will we also do the course correction fuses. In fuses, yeah. yeah, I'm not able to understand your question. Please, please elaborate. That. I'm saying in the in the new facility, uh, will we also do uh, the manufacturing of course correction fuses, uh, which basically you know uh, uh, enhance the uh, capability of the 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 equipment itself. Uh, you know, when we on which we use the fuse. I do not have that detail, but uh, yes, uh, any products related with fuses on this line of business, we will be able to do it. Sure, and thank you. And second and last is, um, you know, to, to your response to Jonas's question on provisions, will that in any way impact FY24, uh, you know, EBITDA margin guidance that you've given, or there is no major impact? No, we expect to maintain the guidance given, 21 to 23 percent EBITDA. Great. Thank you, sir, and good luck. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Aman Vich from Astute Investment Management. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity again, sir. My question is regarding our uh, recent tie-up uh, uh, with the SFCL, uh, and you have earlier alluded uh, that uh, uh, currently the requirement for uh, indigenization of fuel is like twenty uh, percent, which we have to take to maybe fifty sixty percent over the years. And I believe uh, they are also into the same category. So, uh, will they be a contract manufacturer for us? Can we take the supplies for them to help in indigenization? Your thoughts regarding that, JD, as well as specific to uh, this fuse portion, which I believe is common between the two companies. See, HFCL, uh, we have just entered into a MOU, not JV. So, uh, we are working on area of common interest, and uh, detail will be known later on. And on the common portion of fuses, sir, uh, you both have the same uh, product. So, uh, let us go into detail. As of now, it's a broad MOU, so we'll work together. And once things are finalized, we'll let you. Know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can take the last question, please, sir. That was the last question of our question and answer session. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harshit Kapadia for closing comments. Uh, thank you. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Pranam Prakash Shivastan, Chairman and Managing Director, Shri Damodar Bhatt, Director of Financial C, and Mr. Shivastan, Company Secretary, for giving us the opportunity to host this call. We would like to thank the investors and analysts for joining for this call. Any closing remarks, sir? No, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. On behalf of Elara Securities Private Limited, that concludes the conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Please subscribe and press the bell icon to never miss another update.